How do you tell the difference between facts and misinformation? I'm going to explain how to deconstruct arguments so you can spot if it's misinformation and tag any misleading fallacies. This is a skill we all need these days as misinformation is everywhere. Hmm. There's a new report out on climate change. I heard climate change naturally in the past, so what's happening now must be natural. Sorry to interrupt, but actually that argument is misinformation. Being able to identify rhetorical techniques and fallacies in misinformation is like spotting sleight of hand in a magic trick. Once you know the trick, it loses its ability to mislead you. This is how we vaccinate ourselves against misinformation. Well, the antidote to fake news is just a little bit of fake news and a dollop of explanation. What? We can inoculate people against misinformation by explaining the techniques used to distort the facts. In other words, explain the poor reasoning in bad arguments. This approach is called inoculation. We build immunity to misinformation through exposure to a weakened form of misinformation. The way to deliver misinformation in a weakened form is explain the rhetorical techniques and fallacies used to mislead. But before you can do that, you need to identify the fallacies in misinformation. How do you do that? We've developed a strategy based on critical thinking methods to analyze denialist claims. And I bet you're going to explain it to us. If you insist. In 2018, I collaborated with critical thinking philosophers Peter Allerton and David Kincaid on a paper in Environmental Research Letters, outlining a step-by-step -step method to deconstruct denialist claims about climate change and identify reasoning fallacies. While the full step-by-step -step method is more complicated, in this video, I'm going to explain the three most important steps to analyzing misinformation. Let's get into it. The first step in analyzing a claim is to break up the argument into its starting assumptions or premises and its conclusion. For example, the argument you just mentioned has two premises. The first one is that climate has changed naturally in the past. The second one is that the climate is changing now. And the conclusion is that current climate change is natural. Arguments fit the following structure. They have one or more starting assumptions. We call these premises and a conclusion. When you're examining a claim, you first need to reorganize it into this structure. Once you've deconstructed the claim into premises and a conclusion, you can move on to step two, working out whether the argument is logically valid. What's wrong with that? Well, to find out, we first check if the argument is logically valid. Does the conclusion follow from the premises? In this case, the answer is no. The argument commits the fallacy of non sequitur. Just because the climate changed naturally in the past doesn't mean it's changing naturally now. An argument is logically valid if the conclusion logically follows from the premises or starting assumptions. In other words, if all the premises are true, does it follow that the conclusion is also true? For example, take the following argument. Socrates is a man. All men are mortal. Therefore, Socrates is mortal. This argument is logically valid. If both premises are true, then it follows the conclusion must be true. An argument is logically invalid if the conclusion doesn't follow from the premises. This type of argument is jumping to conclusions. It's also known as a non sequitur, Latin for it does not follow. Let's take the argument, I have blue eyes, therefore I know quantum physics. The color of your eyes has no relevance to your knowledge of quantum physics. The conclusion doesn't follow from the premise. If your argument is invalid, you're not done yet with step two. Before you can go to step three, you have to make the argument logically valid. And that's it? I'm just getting started. If an argument's invalid, it's often because there's a hidden assumption. In this case, a hidden third premise. If something wasn't a cause in the past, it can't be a cause now. Adding this premise makes the argument logically valid. When an argument is logically invalid, it's usually because there's an unstated assumption, a hidden premise. You need to add the hidden premise that makes this argument logically valid. This can be the most important part of the whole process. When there's a hidden premise, often this is the heart of where the argument goes wrong. Once you have a valid argument where the conclusion logically follows from the premises, you're now ready to move to step three. So now the conclusion must be true? Not so fast. The next thing we have to do is check that the premises are true. In this case, the third premise is false. It commits the single cause fallacy, ignoring there can be multiple factors that cause climate change. So now we're done? We're done. 
Going through this three-step process shows that the argument climate has changed naturally in the past, so it must be natural now, is based on an unstated assumption. Whatever caused climate change in the past must be causing climate change now. This premise commits single cause fallacy, assuming a single cause drives climate when there might be multiple drivers. It's the same as finding a dead body with a knife sticking out of his back and arguing, well, people have died of natural causes in the past, so this person must have died of natural causes too. That logic is obviously ridiculous, but it's the exact same logic as the past climate change argument. This can all be a bit abstract, so let's look at a concrete example, the Global Warming Petition Project. I'll point to one last piece of evidence about disagreement, um, and this is my favorite. This is called the Oregon Petition. 31,478 American scientists, including 9,023 with PhDs, signed this petition. It says, in part, there is no convincing scientific evidence that human release of carbon dioxide, methane, or other greenhouse gases is causing or will in the foreseeable future cause catastrophic heating of the Earth's atmosphere and disruption of Earth's climate. The Global Warming Petition Project is a website where 31,000 science graduates signed a statement saying humans aren't disrupting climate. Sander van der Linden and his colleagues tested different arguments against the scientific consensus on climate change and found the Petition Project was the most effective in reducing climate perceptions. An analysis by Graham Redfin at the Smog Blog found that the most shared climate story on social media in 2016 was an article about the Petition Project. So the petition project is viral and effective, but is it misinformation? First, let's deconstruct the claim that 31,000 dissenting science graduates shows there's no scientific consensus on human-caused global warming. This claim has two premises. The first premise is that a large proportion of science graduates dissent against human-caused global warming. The second premise is people with science degrees are experts on climate change. The conclusion is there's no expert agreement that humans are causing global warming. Second, let's check if this argument is logically valid. If we assume the premises are true, does it logically follow that the conclusion is true? Well, if it was true that a large proportion of science graduates dissented, and that all those science graduates were climate experts, then yes, it would follow that there was no expert consensus on climate change. This argument is logically valid. This takes us to the third and final step. Are the premises true? The first premise assumes that a large proportion of science graduates dissent against human-caused global warming. 31,000 sure seems like a large number, but millions of Americans got science degrees over the last half century. 31,000 is a fraction of 1% of science graduates. The use of a seemingly large number, 31,000, is a rhetorical technique known as magnified minority. The second premise assumes that people with science degrees are experts on climate change. This is another false assumption. Having expertise in one field doesn't grant you expertise in another field. This is the rhetorical technique of fake experts, or argument from false authority. We know the danger of fake experts in everyday life. If it's something important and complicated, we want someone with relevant expertise, not a degree in some other field. Climate change is one of the most important and complicated issues of our time. When you look through all the science graduates in the petition project, it's full of computer scientists, mechanical engineers, chemical engineers, zoologists, but very few with actual climate expertise. In fact, 99.9% .9 of the 31,000 signers of the petition project have no expertise in climate research. It's fake experts in bulk. So that's one example of a climate myth that's logically valid, but with false premises. But what about an example that's logically invalid? One argument that comes up every year, around the same time of the year, is that cold weather disproves global warming. We keep hearing that 2014 has been the warmest year on record. I asked the chair, you know what this is? It's a snowball, and that's just from outside here. So it's very, very cold out. Very unseasonal. So here, Mr. President, catch this. Mm -hmm. This is our Fox News global warming alert for you. It is freezing. Blizzard versus global warming. Who do you believe, Al Gore or your freezing butt? Another storm could be headed this way next week. Global warming, where are you? We want you back. First, let's deconstruct this claim into an argument structure. The claim is that the weather is unusually cold and therefore global warming isn't happening. 
This argument starts with the premise that some part of the world is experiencing cold weather. The conclusion is that the world isn't experiencing global warming. Second, is this argument logically valid? In this case, no. The conclusion doesn't follow from the premise. Just because it's cold somewhere, it doesn't necessarily follow that global warming isn't happening. So now we need to add an extra premise, an unstated assumption, to make this argument logically valid. The hidden premise that makes this argument logically valid is the assumption that if there was global warming, no area would experience unusually cold weather. Once we add this premise, the argument is logically valid and we can move on to the third step, assessing whether the premises are true. The first premise is true. Sometimes some places experience unusually cold weather, but the second premise is false. Global warming doesn't get rid of cold weather altogether. It just means it's less likely to happen. Over the last half century, we've seen more and more heat records and less cold records. Heat records are now more than twice as likely as cold records. This second premise commits the fallacy of impossible expectations. It's asking the impossible to expect that cold weather is going to completely disappear in a warming world. This argument is also an example of anecdotal thinking, making general conclusions from a specific example. Anecdotal thinking only looks at specific examples or what's happening around you while ignoring the bigger picture. This is like noticing that it's getting dark at night and concluding the sun doesn't exist. That's obviously a ridiculous argument, but it's the same logic as arguing that cold weather disproves global warming. Being able to analyze arguments and identify misleading fallacies is an important skill, but let's face it, it's not easy. It takes a lot of cognitive effort for us to slow down and reason through the structure of an argument, and our brains are hardwired for fast, effortless thinking. So is there a way to take this critical thinking method and make it available to the general public in a way that's accessible and sticky? It turns out there is. It's worth pointing out the advantage of using critical thinking to debunk misinformation. The computer's talking. No, it's Dave. Where are you? I'm in the Alps. A simple way to expose bad logic is to apply a parallel argument and show just how ridiculous the argument really is. The past climate change argument is just like arguing that because people died of cancer in the past, cigarettes can't be the cause of any cancer now. Parallel arguments are a powerful way to make abstract logic more concrete. You take the logical fallacies in misinformation and transplant them into an analogous situation, usually an absurd but real world example. You can use this approach in conversation. Cold weather disproves global warming? That's like saying nighttime proves the sun doesn't exist. Parallel arguments also lend themselves to cartoons. They're not only eye-catching and entertaining, they also make abstract logic more concrete and understandable. It's a powerful way to inoculate the public against misinformation. One last point. As well as developing a methodology for deconstructing misinformation, we also applied our approach to dozens of climate myths. We took this critical thinking approach and applied it to the most common myths about climate change. Every myth we looked at had reasoning flaws and we listen more in this paper published in Environmental Research Letters. If I take your paper, will you leave us alone? Sure. Our paper delves deeper into critical thinking with a more in-depth flowchart than the simple three-step method I explained here. If you're looking for a useful tool to fight misinformation or just interested in building up your own resilience against fake news, I highly recommend reading our paper and delving deeper into critical thinking. Enjoy. We're done. We're done. We're done. We're done. We're done. We're done. <laughs>